what does this tell us about dapagliflozin and the SGLT2 inhibitor class as a whole? And how useful is this agent for clinicians knowing all these additional effects outside of heart failure? Well, first I would um, uh, claim that, um, to, uh, for, uh, I would give you a disclaimer that the, the diabetes prevention um, abstract that we're presenting uh, this, this week or next week um, was not the primary outcome of the trial. So this is, it wasn't even a secondary, it was what we called an exploratory outcome. Basically, we took the opportunity in DAPA-HF, which is a heart failure trial, um, because we were che checking hemoglobin A1Cs and because we knew that we were going to get a lot of patients in DAPA-HF who did not have diabetes we took this opportunity because they were gonna be randomized to placebo dapagliflozin to see if dapagliflozin had any specific benefit in preventing those patients from developing diabetes. Um, so it wasn't a diabetes prevention study per se, but um, uh, uh, basically, an, an like I said, ex exploratory outcome. So that has caveats in terms of you know, how we powered the study and, and we did not, um, um, uh, we did not pursue the diagnosis of, uh, of new onset diabetes um, as aggressively as some of the legitimate diabetes prevention trials have done. In other words, we just had hemoglobin A1C. Um, we did not have fasting glucose. Uh, we did not do oral glucose tolerance tests. So there's a lot of caveats about um, the, the, the trial. Having said that, um, I agree that I think that the uh, impact of dapagliflozin was substantial. Um, it, it's interesting to note that the most commonly used medication to prevent diabetes, even though no medication is actually uh, sanctioned by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for diabetes prevention, um, many clinicians, particularly those in primary care, uh, who see lots of patients with pre-diabetes, you know, this, this form of mild hyperglycemia that predicts the eventual development of diabetes, many of those clinicians actually use metformin um, because it's been out for decades. It's felt to be safe as long as you don't use it in patients with uh, renal failure. And the data from the Diabetes Prevention Program, which is going back more than 10 years now, uh, significantly more than 10 years, I think probably more than 15 years now, suggested that metformin had a beneficial effect on preventing new onset diabetes uh, of 31%. So it's interesting that the drug that is most commonly used for diabetes prevention uh, has an effect that is very similar to what we, what we found in DAPA-HF. So um, what we uh, did was, as mentioned, just focused on those patients who did not have diabetes, right? The patients with diabetes constituted 45% of the patients in DAP-HF, which I'll remind you is a HEF-REF study. So it's heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And patients were randomized to dapagliflozin, 10 milligrams or placebo. And um, in focusing on the 55% of the patients who did not have diabetes at baseline, we track them over time and the median uh, duration of follow-up in DAP-HF, because it was, um, the, the, the drug was so uh, uh, potent for preventing heart failure outcomes. So the, the primary outcome, just to remind you, was cardiovascular mortality and worsening heart failure. Most of worsening heart failure was heart failure hospitalization. And the drug uh, had a huge effect on that outcome of 26%. And because it was an event-driven trial, um, we achieved a certain number of events of mortality and, and heart failure worsening um, pretty quickly. So the median uh, follow-up in the study was only about a year and a half. Not the typical time period you'd, you'd prefer in a diabetes prevention trial because diabetes takes a while to develop. And uh, when you're doing clinical trials, you need a certain number of these events to, 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 to document statistical significance in your, in, in your intervention. Having said that, 
uh, even though we only had about 18 months of follow-up, uh, we still uh, were able to demonstrate um, uh, this 32% uh, risk reduction uh, for new onset uh, diabetes. Now, um, many diabetes prevention investigations are criticized. And the criticism is the following, uh, particularly when you're using a drug that impacts glucose. So if you're using a glucose lowering medication, the following criticism is often levied, uh, which is, hey, you're using a drug that lowers glucose. So aren't you just masking the development of diabetes? Right, because it's a, it's a, disease, it's a disease that is um, uh, diagnosed by glucose right, or hemoglobin A1C or, or glucose tolerance testing. So if you're using an agent that lowers glucose or lowers A1C, um, is the difference that you see over time simply biochemical? Is it simply you're masking the diabetes? And, and that has been, um, uh, that, that, that notion that, that masking diabetes is all you're doing with this, uh, with these medications, uh, has um, been. Um, what I mean to say is that the 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 uh, the folks that made that criticism about these trials, um, they point to these um, withdrawal studies from these diabetes prevention investigations, uh, and these are where they take patients at the end of the trial withdraw study drug and then retest them after you know six weeks or three months and if you see that the patients who did not develop diabetes who were on the intervention right the the, the medication then quickly develop diabetes over that period of time then that would suggest that the drug is is just masking the underlying disease process now, I might point out that um, I don't necessarily agree with that because I think it is a biochemical disease. And if you, if you can mask it for like a lifetime, I'm good with that, you know, because you're, you, you're probably not going to develop a diabetes complication, meaning a specific diabetes complication like diabetic retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy. Cardiovascular disease is separate because there are many different inputs into that, right? There, there's glucose and lipids and obesity and smoking and, and, and just reducing the glucose, we don't think necessarily prevents cardiovascular disease, but something like diabetic eye disease, if you don't have diabetes, it's kind of hard to get diabetic eye disease. So I'm okay with masking if, if the masking is safe and if it's durable. So I've always had a bit of a, of a intellectual, uh, uh, argument with those individuals who say that if you're just masking diabetes, it's not as good as truly preventing diabetes as you might with weight loss, where you're really doing something fundamental, you know. Having, having said that, the reason I bring this up is that in most of these diabetes prevention trials where you uh, use a glucose-lowering medication, you actually do see a small but significant uh, decrease in hemoglobin A1C. So in, in the studies that I can recall, you know, typically the hemoglobin A1C is, is the separation is at least 0.2, if not 0.3%. It's interesting that in DAPA-HF, we did not find uh, virtually any difference in the hemoglobin A1C. Um, the, 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 the hemoglobin A1C was about, and we measured it at eight months, um, uh, because that's where we measured a lot of our um, of our biochemical parameters to give the drug enough time to um, exert an effect on the parameter. Although we did check A1C periodically during the study, but if for this analysis we used the eight eight month mark, um, and and the differences was um, about 0 0.05 or 0 0.04 percent whether you're talking about the mean or the median. Um, so it was, it was less than 0.1%. Um, so it was really a trivial difference. 
So despite that, you still saw this diabetes prevention effect. And I think this is maybe a manifestation of that when you're using a SGLT2 inhibitor in uh, patients who don't have diabetes, it doesn't really affect their glucose levels all that much because um, hepatic glucose production, the liver's production of glucose probably compensates for any glucose losses. So the body just tries to maintain the glucose level at its baseline level. So that's interesting, right? So this is, you know, maybe the first, uh, that maybe this is the first drug that um, we've used to um, uh, decrease the development of new onset diabetes that maybe is not masking, maybe is having a more fundamental effect on, um, you know, either uh, insulin secretion or insulin sensitivity. And I, I think it's, it's, it's interesting and, and is a bit different from other uh, diabetes prevention trials that have been looked at. 